Welcome to the Mental Health Book Club podcast with your hosts, Sydney Timmons and The Secret Psychiatrist. We would like to take this opportunity to let you know that we will be covering a diverse range of mental health topics that may be distressing to some listeners. You can find a full list of the topics being covered in our show notes. Please check the show notes before listening to any of our episodes. Welcome to the Mental Health Book Club podcast with Sydney Timmons and Becky Lawrence. And today we are doing a slightly different episode because we're going to talk about why the Mental Health Book Club podcast is supporting the Mental Health Media Charter that was created by Natasha Devon MBE. Yeah, and launched for the Mental Health Day campaign in 2017. The mission statement is, in endorsing the Mental Health Media Charter, you are signalling that you are committed to discussing and reporting stories relating to mental health responsibly helpfully, and in a way that takes into account the needs of the most vulnerable people of our population. You are acknowledging the power of language and imagery in shaping social attitudes and declaring your intention to genuinely educate and to reduce the stigma around mental illness. And in some ways, that is kind of the whole point of the Mental Health Book Club podcast. The reason why we started this was in some ways to add an additional new voice, I think, to the mental health community, because there's lots of people talking about the stigma associated with how people interact with them. But really what we're looking at is the stigma in books and in written language. And so... But also in educating people on what the different conditions are and ourselves in what the different conditions are. There's so many more than I ever realised. And I know that recently you were talking to me about a new one that I hadn't heard of and you hadn't heard of that really usually affects teenagers which was DMDD. Yeah, Disruptive Mood Dysregulation Disorder. and Which is something that we'd never heard of. No. We had to look it up and figure out what it was. Yeah, and this particular student has been diagnosed ASD, ODD, so Oppositional Defiant Disorder, and also DMDD, the Disruptive Mood Dysregulation Disorder. And often these do apparently go in together. And DMDD is the mental disorder in children and adolescents characterised by persistently irritable and angry mood and frequent temper outbursts that are disproportionate to the situation and significantly more severe than the typical reaction of the same aged peers. And I thought that was pretty interesting just in a general because you can instantly see how someone might stigmatise that particular condition because you go, well, it's just normal teenage behaviour. Well, Well, it's not. That's the point. And that is exactly what some of the teachers, when we were discussing this student's diagnosis in the office, and and someone was telling me about it, and another teacher overheard and was like, that's just being a teenager. Mm. And actually, it's not. It is disproportionate. It is going further. And and actually, it is disrupting that student's ability to understand the world around them. Yeah, and and the right appropriate. Yeah responses and things like that so it is something that she has got to come to terms with and learn to deal with which is what I'm helping her with so I had to do some research because I had no idea what this was well reading it it kind of seems like something similar to borderline personality disorder like maybe even a precursor and something we can speak to the secret psych about but I don't know it just it was just one of those things that I'd never heard of. And yeah, yeah there's still things we're definitely learning. Definitely learning so much. And every time we read a book, I learn something different about a condition or the way it's dealt with or a new... We're learning a lot about what the differences are between the British systems and what's going on here to what's going on in America, because a lot of our books are American or British. And it would be nice to maybe get some other nations and what their mm. mental health illness provision Treatment and provisions yeah. are. Yeah. So yeah, it's been really interesting what we've done so far. And we are coming up to a year, Almost a year yeah. in September, which is, it feels crazy we've been doing this a year. Yeah. And part of what we've done is we've signed up to this media charter because we truly believe that using these seven steps, you can actually make sure that when you are reporting on mental health, you are doing it in a responsible way. And we have had to we have had to reassess the way we Well talk we about did things. start off speaking and talking about mental health in perhaps not the best way, yeah. which we have now modified. So if you listen to some of our early uh, episodes, you will hear us using the what would be considered poor representation of suicide yeah i mean i have had to try really hard and i still have to check myself Mm. because i do say commit suicide and And you slip into it i do just the thing because you've always done that that's what you've always said 
And so it's changing that mindset. Yeah, definitely. And and that takes time. Mm. And we are working on and there are times when we've had to re-record bits because we've gone, oh no, we said that wrong and we've got to we've got to go back and change it. Yeah. And that's okay because we're not saying you've got to get it perfect. And Natasha's the same. She's not saying let's do it perfect, but she's saying let's try and be a bit more responsible and a bit more aware. And think about what how we're saying things yeah. in the first place. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is really important. And there's a lot of people who have signed up to this media charter. It's not just us. It's not just mental health charities. It is also a lot of other people. I mean, even Theresa May back to Grazia signing it. We've got radio stations, magazines, organizations like Girl Guiding and actually the Labour campaign for mental health. Also the teacher toolkit. There's several blogs that are involved. Several, Including myself. Yeah. Several newspapers, radio stations and other publications as well. So there's lots of different, what, lots of different kinds of media that mm. are joining up with this. And then there's lots of celebrity influencers. So people like Rachel Riley and some of the MPs around, as well as some journalists and even Beverly Knight. Which is pretty impressive. Recording artist. Mm. Yeah. So all of those people have signed up and said, you know what? These seven things are really good. And the reason Natasha did this is because she said she was a journalist. She knows what it's like to be a journalist. She knows you're in a high pressure position. You don't have time to do all the research into all the different conditions. You don't have the time to assess what people think about the way you write about things. So what she was saying, you know, with all of these headlines and things like that, actually, if you stick to these seven things, then you're you're trying and you're doing the right thing and you are being responsible. Yeah. And there is a more extensive charter as such that has all guidelines that has been produced by the Samaritans. But I guess the main thing is that if you're a busy journalist, you're not going to trawl through a big document to find out how you are meant to say one particular thing. Yeah. And this just summarizes it so succinctly that in some ways it it kind of shows maybe some apathy. Is that the correct term that I'm yeah. thinking of? If you don't use them yeah, and use the charter. I think so. And I, I do think being that it is so easy accessible, that yeah, you are kind of not acting responsibly if you don't use it. And I'm really surprised that some of our major newspapers who have been criticised for the way they talk about mental health haven't looked into joining this and trying to change the the way that they say things. It isn't even just about mental health. I think a lot of the newspapers need to look at the way they talk about things. I mean, I tweeted yesterday because on Friday I went to the Somme with my school. We were taking the students because we study that, that as part of the GCSE. And on the next day I saw an article in the in the Sun about how in Belgium where they were building a housing estate oh, by, yes. by mm. law they have to have archaeologists come in and they've actually found a German trench that was taken over by the British and the South Africans. And they found over 100 British and South African bodies as well as a German mass grave from after a battle. And the way the, the headline kept the sun said, and might get this you know slightly wrong what the exact wording was, but they were saying that the British heroes have been found in the German trench. And the problem I have with this is that actually, yes... Most of the Germans didn't necessarily support the rhetoric of the day no so so they were doing the problem it is they had to all soldiers are heroes all soldiers are. are brave and courageous no matter what side of the war you're on because actually what you are you're fighting you're fighting for, for your country, your country you're yeah. not the politician that decided to go to war you're not the politician that weighs up whether you should go or not and especially during the first world war when most countries had conscription mm. and so you had to go to war if you were fit and healthy otherwise you would be put in prison or even court-martialed and killed so there are lots and lots of things that actually mean that those people in those trenches no matter what side they were on are brave courageous heroes and and i think the way that it was worded that the british were brave the british were heroes and then the germans were just german soldiers and i, I didn't like that so i actually tweeted them and said look i think this is the wrong way of saying that I think that you should, everyone, it, all soldiers are brave, all soldiers are heroes. They all died. It's, yeah. They yeah. died serving their country and that is what you need to remember. And I think that is the thing that you need to, that they should be holding on to and they're not. And, and I didn't like that. So I, I actually tweeted them and said, look, what are you doing? They haven't replied. You know, I'm not probably wasn't expecting it. No, but I think challenging, talking, raising those awareness just make, make people think a little bit differently. And I think that's what Natasha is trying to do. She's trying to make the conversation about media as well, about what we're trying to do, mm. a book she's trying to do with the newspapers and with mm. the, the, me, the newspaper reports and, and media reports, because actually that's where most people hear about mental health. 
Yeah, I have to admit that I have been on a little bit of a mission. So if I am listening to podcasts, so I do subscribe to quite a few, so I do like to listen to them. And I don't have a TV connected, so I stream quite a lot, but I don't necessarily watch TV. So I listen to these podcasts. And if they say something like commit suicide, I will either email or tweet them. And I know that quite a few have got back to me and said, why, well, thank you for letting me know. Because I'm trying to do this in a respectful way. It's just yeah, a case of... you're not going... Oi, you, yeah, stop it. It's not a rude no, thing. It's, it's a... I was just wanting to reach out to you because you guys know that words can have power over people. You reach a lot of people. Commit isn't necessarily the best way to describe suicide anymore. Maybe you should think about using something like died by suicide. And we'll go into the reasons for that in a minute because we'll go through the charter. But generally, they're quite positive. And actually, I think that's a good way. I mean, recently, we've been messaging with Happy Form magazine, which is a great magazine all about mental health issues and, um, and mental health generally. And it's available in a lot of different stores now as well, which is really good. But we've been messaging with them and they actually said to us, oh, by the way, you've I had spelling mistakes, people. No yeah. one else picked it up. No, no one else pointed it out And so it's me. been almost a year and some of the stuff was literally back to the beginning. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not very good at spelling, so I have dyslexia and I have major issues with there, 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 theirs. I really hate theirs. And for some reason, I managed to swap some letters around in the Samaritans. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that I could have got wrong was spelling the Samaritans wrong. I mean, <laughs> what? an idiot no, to be doing that. I was not. like, no. So the problem was there that I just basically went through and copied and pasted that particular section because it's going to be the same every time. It's not going to change. Apart from copying and pasting the same mistake on everything. So it was all over our website. So I had to go through it and change it all on our website. I then realized that I'd done that on Patreon. So I had to go through Patreon and fix all of that. I then realized that I'd done the same on the YouTube. YouTube channel. So I had to go and fix all of that. And I was like, I feel like such a fool. And I'm so grateful that someone pointed this out to me because I don't want to look like an idiot. Yeah. And I felt so ashamed. I'm like, I shouldn't feel ashamed. I shouldn't. It's, yeah, it's a mistake. It's mistakes that are very easy to make. The word Samaritans is particularly difficult to spell. A's and M's and A's. And, and theirs and is something that a lot of people get wrong. So it's understandable mistakes, but if they hadn't pointed them out to us, we would have carried on doing exactly. it. I would have been oblivious and yeah. just continued to look like the fool yeah. that I am. And for they not spelling actually apologise. So I'm really sorry. I hope you don't mind us pointing this out. I'm like, we were like, no, tell me these yeah. things because and then I, I think can fix it. If you're talking about mental health and you're making podcasts or you're doing something, and someone says, "Oh, by the way, did you know this?" I think people are more susceptible to go, oh, okay, then I, now I know that I will change it. Yeah, just yeah. like we did. You know, we've been using Commit and now we know differently. We've learned. And that's the whole point of this, education. Yeah. It's about teaching people what to and say. And we're never going to be perfect. It. No, and we don't I would love to be because yeah. that would just make my life easier, but and it's, it's never going to happen. And it's not about going PC crazy. It's just about being aware of the, the connotations that these mm. words have. Like I was even telling my students about this because one of them talked about, you know, said for an answer for a question, I can't remember what lesson it was now, but we were talking about lesson and some of the words in this uh, particular source, some of them, I think it was actually where I was teaching slavery and it was an account from a slave from the 1700s. And he actually was talking about sometimes I'd wish for death to take me. And I said, well, what were they talking about? And one of the students said, oh, he wants to commit suicide. And I went, okay, yes. However, we try not to say this. And I, you know, used that as a learning opportunity for everyone and said, you know, what does the word commit actually make us think about? And then everyone was like, what? Well, I'm not sure. And then I was like, well, what else do we commit? And this weren't crimes. And I went, exactly. And I said, it's not been a crime since what, 1962? And so- It's been a while. Yeah. And so I said that to the students and said, you know, and that makes someone think that if it's a crime and if they're going to get told off for it, that actually they might be less likely to talk about it. Yeah. So that's probably a good point to start yeah. going through the media charter, isn't it? So the first one out of all of it is to, in some ways, change the way that we talk about suicide. So not using the phrase commit suicide or successful suicide. Yeah, because it, it, as we were saying, it suggests, the word commit suggests com criminality and also blame. And we understand that it is, and it hasn't been a crime since actually, she says 1961. I was a year out. Sorry about that. And successful suicide contravenes what we now understand about that act. Most people who take their lives are ambivalent in that part of them wants to live and it is about the fact that they are ill they're in mm -hmm. so much pain so much mental 
torture and 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 feelings that they actually can't see any other way out mm-hmm. and so it is the mental health illness that is actually killing them yeah it's like catching a cancer and the cancer being the death of you yeah. even though you want to fight it it's like what the secret psych said about depression she said that depression is a brain cancer or she likens it to brain cancer yeah because it just eats away at you yeah And if you died of cancer... You wouldn't say that it was... Yeah, you didn't commit cancer, did you? No, you didn't... Yeah. You You didn't have successful cancer. Yeah. (laughs) Although, technically, that would be what it is. The cancer was successful. The whole point of the cancer was to take over your body, and it got to the point where your body can continue anymore. So, I don't know. I'm kind of waffling a bit. (laughs) I apologise. But it's true. It is all of that. So, the best alternative, she said, is died by suicide. That's the best alternative. Other options include attempt, completed suicide, took or ended their own life. So, those are the words that she recommends being used instead. And just as a side note, there has been this motivational quote that people think that if they put it up on places where people go to take their own lives, that it will stop them from doing so. Yeah. And it's motivational to have this. And it the note says that suicide doesn't take the pain away, it just passes it on to someone else. And I got really annoyed at this. Well, that's, I would that's use an expletive at this point. It's making that person feel firstly ashamed that they feel that they need to take their own lives because they can't see any other way. It is blaming them for having these thoughts and feelings. And you wouldn't open up, would you? Because if you're saying that by taking your own life by suicide is passing the pain on, you're going to go, well, if I talk about it, I'm going to also be passing the pain on. Yeah. So you would just go, you know what, I'll just keep hiding this. And I didn't exactly feel like everyone else mattered at that point. It isn't about anyone else. It is about how bad the person is feeling on the inside. And no amount of me being told, oh, well, think about Lawrence if you went and took your own life. I didn't care. I honestly well, did not so care. so much pain at that point that you can't think of anything else and you can't I wanted think it about your family and, and actually in those moments you think actually it's probably better because you're becoming, you feel a burden. You feel like exactly, you're, you're, you're taking that yeah. part away. So actually you feel like, yes, they'd be sad, but actually they'd be better In off. the long run. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people feel that way. So putting notes on the ridges, I think that concept is a nice idea. Well, I but... grew up in Southampton where there was one particular bridge that people would jump off of, but they put Samaritans things along yeah. the bridge. That's the kind of motivational yes. thing that you want. Not, oh, by the way, if you do this, you're going to cause someone else pain. Yeah. Yeah, more helpful things that you yeah. can ask Here's where you can Here's get the you... support from, yeah. not here, if you do this, then... Or something that gives them... A hope if it's possible or please think twice get help something just a plea but understanding that actually nothing that provides a blame culture because this is it we as We're a too child quick to blame yeah as everything a child, is blame. i was always told that suicide was a coward's way out and it's not no do you really think that a coward would do something to that extent does that make sense yeah it's an extreme option Yeah. Because they feel, and I certainly did, I felt like it was my only option. Yeah. Well, that's what your mind is telling you because you're in that much pain and everything. So, yeah, it is, it's not about that. It is about something, it's not about blame. Okay, so the next one is number two of the media charter. Show before images in eating disorder stories or pictures which should be triggering to people who self-harm. So for people who are in a healthy mindset, Seeing before pictures of people in the grips of anorexia or who have self-harmed can act as a deterrent. However, for people who are in either existing experience or in recovery from eating disorders or self-harm, we now understand that these pictures can become something to aspire to or to cause distress, which in turn sets back their recovery. We now understand that eating disorders and self-harm are mental health conditions. The lowest weight or severest self-harm doesn't necessarily indicate the most psychological distress. The body cannot tell the mind story. So this is about when you put the images, shock images. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, if you, I was anorexic as a child, and when I saw those pictures, yeah, I would agree. It, it was like that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be. That skinny. Mm. It wasn't a oh, I, that person looks so ill because I couldn't see that because you're you're in that mental health illness, which means that you can't see the truth. Mm. 
you have body dysmorphia and that kind of thing. So I wouldn't look at these images and think, oh, wow, that's awful. I don't want to be there. I would actually want to be there, Mm. which is really sad. So it might put some people off, but if you're in it, it's it's not going to help. It's, and actually can trigger if you're recovering, that actually you want to go back to that. Mm. So I think that's a really good point. That we've got to think about the images we use. Number three, and I shouldn't chuckle a little bit, but you kind of slipped up on this one just a second ago. So you yeah. said you referred to yourself as an anorexic. So number three is use the term anorexics bulimics depressives or schizophrenics and this is because of the implication that you are just that thing and that there's nothing more to you than the anorexia and this is one of the ones that i'm finding the most difficult to change i think in my own vocabulary is remembering that the person is more and i know that the person is more than their diagnosis well yeah i I just said it about myself i wasn't saying that as only me but i agree i wouldn't if I had cancer I wouldn't say you know you're canceric yeah <laughs> I don't know so I, I definitely I am think, cancer yeah we've got to change that idea of I had anorexia yeah yeah okay so that's one we're still working on so yeah please bear with us when we're doing these things especially I think when you're writing it's easy to go back and edit yeah when we're talking it's a little harder at times although we do re-record if we need to yes So number four is give too much detail on suicide, self-harming or eating disorder methodology. So we now understand that giving lots of detail about how people have harmed themselves can inspire imitational behavior. There is a delicate balance to be struck with your responsibility to report on the facts of a case, trying to avoid going into too much detail, which will ensure this report is safe for all audiences. For more information on how to strike this balance, please see the Samaritans Media Guidelines. Which are fantastic, by the way. Yeah. As a general rule, story should focus on the whys and not the hows, which is really good. And is fair enough. And I mean, we discussed when we watched, or you watched 13 Reasons Why, and I read Mm. the book, and I still haven't got there, because I am so concerned about that one scene where it graphically shows Hannah Baker taking her own life, that it would be triggering for me, and I still haven't got there. Yeah. And it was a really difficult scene to watch. And it was heartbreaking. And do we necessarily need to have gone into that much detail? I mean, it wasn't in the book. It never really mentioned what happened in the book. And it's one of the major criticisms of it when you go back to when it was first launched and that, that actually it was too graphic and it didn't need to be. And But then you need to see what it is. You need to Mm. know that it isn't pretty. It isn't... But then as someone who has contemplated suicide... I didn't expect it to be pretty. No. And I fully understood that whoever would be the one to find me would probably be shook up by what had happened. Yeah. So. And again, maybe this is, again, like the imagery, people who have never uh, experienced experienced it, it, that actually might be a deterrent. But Mm. actually, for people who are experiencing or have experienced, then it might actually not be helpful to them in their recovery. Mm. So definitely something to think about. So number five, it is use generic terms like mental health issues when describing terrorists and other violent criminals. So this is a common misconception, is that if you have committed some kind of crime, you have to have a mental illness. And that is not necessarily the case. No. I often get it when I'm teaching history and students say, well, Hitler, well, he was mad, wasn't he? He was crazy. And you're like, well, he might have been. But we can't necessarily say that for sure. Um, no. And actually, sane people commit horrible acts. Yeah. Mentally ill people commit horrible acts. It's not because of the mental illness. It's because they're people. Yeah. People commit horrible acts. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's... It's not helpful no. for the rest of society to go, well, that person has a mental illness. Maybe they're a terrorist as well. And everything else that yeah. goes on top. The statistics tell us that 99% of people with mental illnesses are more likely to harm themselves than others, which shows us that actually most violent crimes are committed by people that are sane. Yeah. And so you can't actually just say a terrorist or somebody who's committed a murder or something like that, oh, they must be mentally ill, because that's not necessarily the case. Mm. And unfortunately, especially in the media and, and things like that, it does portray it that way. Especially things I think like people use the the term sociopath or psychopath 
probably more generically than they should, don't you think? Yeah. So if you are following the Mental Health Media Charter, you are also pledging that you will do your best to do two following things. One of those is to understand the difference between mental health and mental ill health. Yeah. And at this point, I'd like to say I may have had a little meltdown over this particular aspect, well, you but know, I didn't realise it was... There was this actually was before some, the yeah. charter and yeah. we had accessed it and looked at it. And you were questioning the fact that we often say people with mental health when we actually mean people with mental health issues or problems. Yeah. And this, the first point of this is understand the difference between that. Everybody has mental health. Yeah. And mental and health can be good and bad and indifferent. Yeah. Mental health illness and mental health ill problems health and all of those kind of sayings yeah. is when you're talking about when there is some kind of problem. Yeah. When you say mental health, it's like saying your fitness level. Well, we don't go around going your physical health, do we? No. Not often anyway. No. Mental health is health. Mm. And so, yeah, when we say mentally mental health illnesses, that's where we need to be making the difference. So, and I know that we are, we are trying to change this because we've realized that we don't necessarily do this all the time we've probably in this single podcast also done it where we've said mental health when we mean mental health illnesses well i've often said when you're looking after someone with mental health well yeah everyone has mental health so therefore you're looking after everyone and what i'm really trying to say is that i am talking about someone being looked after with mental ill health yeah and i did yeah poor becky and the secret psychiatrist got all these messages bombarded to them going ah what do we say i don't want to upset people and I think they were just like, there, there, dear, calm down. But I did well, kind of get were, myself into a tizzy. Yeah, you were it. also like, am I overthinking this? Or am I actually, is this a point? And actually, it is a point. It seems to be. I didn't even know. Well, I have read the media charter before, but now going back over it properly with you like this, I've gone, ah, oh, this is exactly I wasn't what actually yeah. with overthinking this particular section. Yeah. And then she was also saying things like, instead of saying battles with mental health, it should be issues with mental health, mm. mental ill health. And so making sure that we make that difference between it so you can understand that actually everyone has mental health. And everyone is, yeah, yeah. is in some ways doing things to improve their mental health as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, she talks about if you are going to talk about mental health illnesses or mental like health in do. general, then you should also include good links, good quality sources that support can be sought from the people that have read your content. So if they're reading it and they feel triggered by it or they're not sure or they want to know more about it, there should be uh, links for that reader. And so she actually also mentions a few things like Young Minds, The Samaritans, Calm, The Mix, The Self-Harm Network, Beat, Mind. I would even add Sane to that. Sane's a very good resource as we well. We think Mental Health think. is also a good one. Yeah. There's quite a few out there. I, If you haven't looked already, on our website, we actually have a whole section now that is dedicated to different help places for help. Yep. I've looked at all of these. I think that all of these are good places to go to for help. They're not necessarily giving you the wrong information and I will keep that as up to date as I can. Yeah. And I hope maybe I should add that into each of our posts that I put on the podcast yeah. is a link to that particular page. Yeah. And I think as well though, be aware of making sure they are good quality sources. There are sources out there that are not good quality. There's even horrible websites where people talk about their issues and they're encouraged to, to participate and yeah. take part. Yeah. Yeah. So do make sure that it is, especially making sure it's linked with one of the major the charities, major charities would which help, is a good yeah. place to start. And try not to link to forums which are discussing rather than actually try and link to factual places. I read somewhere, I can't remember where this is now, but I read somewhere that often forums start off as a place for support, but then can ultimately end up being somewhere where that you're supporting each other in perpetuating the behaviours. So yeah, it's a tricky line to so you've got to be really careful. Forums. And if you're going to recommend a forum, then is it being policed? As in, is people are people checking that it is actually a safe? Is it being and, monitored? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that is all of the mental health charter. We have signed up to this. We are working on making sure that we think about what we are saying and how we're saying things. We are trying our best to be as responsible as possible. And we're trying to also support each other. So if we notice when one of us has let something slip that we go, oh, hang on, you said that, we do notify each other. 
so that we can then address that and go, oh, yeah. I did it again. And it's just that awareness. Yeah. And when we can't ever say that we're not going to make a mistake. We are doing our best and we want to promote mental health in a positive and responsible way. Exactly. And so I thought that this episode would just give you a little bit of background about what we're trying to do and why certain things are really important to the wider community about the way that we are speaking about things. So, I mean, on my blog, I've done quite a lot of posts that have now been called the power of words and how we talk about things has a bigger, deeper impact on others. Yeah, I think it is really important. The language that we use is so important. And I think Natasha Devon would agree with me when she when I say that. So she is a big promoter of of good positive language, which is why she did this charter. And we're really grateful because it has it does made make us, it easier. It yeah. makes it we go oh look we can see it in black and white right there. Yeah, these are the seven things we need to be considering. Yeah. So thank you so much to Natasha Devon for doing it. Thank you to all the people so far who have signed up to it. And I I really hope that some more national newspapers, some more news outlets online sign up to this. We've bought the badge. We do. You can buy it online. It's £1.20. It's not a lot of money. And they send you a Mawam. Mawam is how... Is that sweet? Yeah, that's sweet. They send a little sweet with it too. And it was like, oh, I got very excited. (laughs) So it's a really good little badge to put to say that you are supporting the charter and that you're using it and you're doing your best. That's all we want. We don't, we know people are going to make mistakes. We make mistakes all All the the time, time. (laughs) all the time. But if you can try and act responsibly and try and change the way we talk about things, then through the generations, it should change. Exactly. So thank you so much for listening. And in the meantime, it's okay not to be okay. And if you're not okay, talk. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Mental Health Book Club podcast. If you need additional help with your mental health, please contact the Samaritans on 116-123, which is a 24-hour helpline. And if you need additional information about mental health issues, please visit mind at mind.org.uk. Our next book is Insane, America's Criminal Treatment of Mental Illness by Alyssa Roth. Our next episode with the secret psychiatrist will be about forensic mental health. If you'd like to find out more about the MHBC podcast, please visit our website, mentalhealthbookclub.com. We really hope that you enjoy this podcast and we would like to hear what you think. Please head over to Twitter, follow us at MHBC underscore podcast, or head over to Facebook and follow our Facebook page, which is Mental Health Book Club. If you would like to show your support further, please share us with your family and friends and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. We are now on Patreon. Please head over to patreon.com forward slash MHBC to donate as little as $2 a month to the Mental Health Book Club podcast. As a result of your donation, you will get early access to some of our episodes. You will get specific episodes that are only for patrons, you'll be eligible to be entered into free prize draws.